What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to today's video. We are stacking yet another REW on the channel, but this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to see how this works. So I've got irons, baby half bridge port, everything is ready to go. Everything is clean. Center irons clean. Housings are clean, marked front and rear. Not that it really matters, but I mark them just so I know which one is which. Ports, exhaust ports are done, rear irons done, stud kit, chilling, ready to be installed. One thing with the stud kit that I like to do is go ahead and run the stud into every hole on the front iron, just so there's no surprises when you go to put it together that every single stud goes all the way in, you don't have any issues. That's that. We got all this stuff cleaned, laid out, ready to go. We are going to delete the thermal pellet, which is this thing, get rid of the uh, spring-loaded air through the e-shaft and this is what I'm going to do different I noticed in the last video some wind noise from my my fan it is hot out here guys hot I tend normally build the rotors outside of the engine right so side seals are all cut to fit corner seals are in etc this engine doesn't have solid corner seals which means we've got these little rubber plugs now, when you stack a half bridge port engine, it is preferred that on the rear rotor, the two piece apex seal, the small piece of it is on the center of the engine, which is where the center iron is. Reason being is that the center iron doesn't have a bridge, therefore it is less likely for the little corner piece to pop out, fall into the bridge, and cause issues. With that being said, you can't exactly just put that corner piece all the way down in there without, you know, it doesn't just slide down, slide down between the housing and the rotor and the apex seal groove, etc., etc. Hopefully that's making sense to you. So here's what I'm going to try. I've seen a lot of people build engines this way with a lot of success, and we're going to see if I can successfully navigate it. My way around getting the seal in backwards is to glue them together and you drop them in. And ideally the glue doesn't break and it makes it all the way down. So, I've got my seals glued together, okay, just some super glue, nothing fancy, and I've got some, where did I just put them all, some oil control rings, they stretch, and we're going to put the apex seals in the rotor, wrap the oil control rings around it like a rubber band so the apex seals are in here already, that way when I put it on put it in, in the engine they're already set how I wanted to I don't have to drop the apex seal and springs down I don't have to worry about my corner seal springs getting funky and then as I drop the housing on we just make sure they don't you know pop out or something and then at the very bottom I can snip the oil control rings and pull them out and then it's built apex seals are in Comment below if you've ever done that, done it that way before, or if that's your preferred way to do it. Um, I don't really know how this is going to work out, so we're just gonna we're 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 going for it. We're gonna see how it works and testing, figure it out. So with that, I'm gonna put y'all on the bench, and we're gonna get stacking this engine. And whenever I bang my head against the wall because something ain't going right, you'll be the first to know. Honestly, that didn't suck. Um, the only issue that I had is that my super glue broke on this apex seal right here. So that one's fixing the, the pop out. I gotta put some grease on it. And then it'll stay down, hopefully. Um, 
I may try to super glue it down, but we will find out. Otherwise, everything stayed in there um, like it should. As the, the housing went down, it got one side of the oil control ring stuck. Uh, once I got the housing started, I slid the oil control rings down and then looped them over this uh, exhaust stud here. With only one, if you have two people, this would be a million times easy, super easy. Um, so I grabbed them with my long needle nose, pulled them over the stud so that there was an obscene amount of tension and then I used my scissors to cut them right here. There's no way to like, at least my scissors aren't sharp enough to reach in there and snip it. And then they went flying, which fortunately we got all of it. Um, but yeah, see how the other side goes. It really didn't suck. All right, so what happened there? Well, I had to pull that housing back up that you guys saw. The coolant seal had actually popped out. So when I put the housing down, one side was sitting up higher and I'm like, huh, questionable. We don't like this. So get in there and look, see the coolant seals popped out. So lift the housing back up a little bit, get the coolant seal back in the groove, put the housing back on and we're good to go. So those outer coolant seals, they fit pretty tight. Um, in this groove right here, they fit pretty tight. You really gotta make sure that you don't get them twisted and also that they stay down in there. That's what I use this Permatex high tack stuff to help glue them in. Um, use Hylomar, this, that, and the other. It's mainly when you're doing the center iron and the rear iron um, and you're flipping them over, you don't want them to fall out. So, but apex seals are in, which is good. We don't have to worry about the corners popping up on this side because this is the long side. Um, it did get a little wonky trying to put it in there, but it's all fine. It really will only go together kind of one way with how the rotors are timed. So um, it can be off a little bit, but once you get the housing dowels in, the rotor has to be right. Otherwise the housing won't fit. So. Um, Drop rear iron on. Look, I didn't put the E shaft in backwards this time. Alright guys, moment of truth, does it take more than 20 foot pounds to turn over? The answer is no. If you're curious why I measure how many foot pounds it takes, man, it is hot. Um, if you're curious why I measure how many foot pounds it takes to turn this engine over, I had an issue with one of the previous engines I built where the corner seal, or the, where the apex seal corner, the two piece part, had popped up and actually got stuck between the housing and the iron. And it was causing it to turn over much harder than normal for me, as in like it was sticking. So called on my rotary buddies, they measured all their engines. They all took less than 20 foot pounds. So it's just kind of a measure of if this takes more than 20 foot pounds to crank the engine over, no plugs, no nothing, um, something's wrong. So. Feels pretty good, sounds good. Stud kit, a little bit more of a pain, but not that big of a deal. That's installed. 
I'm gonna go eat dinner and cool off. What's gonna be 14.2 milliseconds for you is gonna be a little ways for me. Hopefully it cools off in the shop here. I'm gonna get the oil pan and the front cover cleaned up and then uh, that's all that's left. Dress the front end and put the imp and set the input stuff. Um, I've got to do as well. So hopefully it fits with one of the spacers I've got. But uh, let's get the oil pan cleaned up, front cover assembled, coolant tested. This thing be done. Would you just look at that completed engine? Pumped with how this thing came out. Black and silver is just the best. It just, it just looks right. And then that orange and green and weird colors and stuff. So the synopsis of the build, we've got a 13B REW. It was running when it got brought here. It looked like a factory on open block. We stripped it down, cleaned everything, had to fix a few things, looked like some pieces went through the the engine at some point, maybe a piece of a turbo, you never know. Had to replace one housing. It's got rotary aviation classic seals in it, a baby half bridge port, exhaust port, stick the thing back together, new cut side seals, the the cryo ones or whatever, Mazda ones, um, and everything's back together. And it also has a turbo stud kit in it. The studs have more rigidity than the tension bolts, so typically you have a little bit less block flex running studs versus that. So all that said and done, all put back together, this thing's ready to go back to the owner and get stuck in a car. Beautiful SSM, which is silver. Uh, I don't know if it's like some, something silver metallic. I forget what the first S is, but my dream FD would be silver. And... Uh, so stoked. But uh, at least my Dream 93 FD would be silver. I really want to get a 2002 from Australia. But a Type R. But uh, anyways, I'm happy with it. So time to put the cover on it. Put it in the corner. We've got some daylight here at the shop. So hopping into the next project. And uh, pretty stoked. So I got to get this car in the shop by the end of the week. And then there's another rotary truck over there, which I won't walk over there, but we're going to be working on a rotary truck next. So get amped for that. Working up right now, editing the final video, taking the RX-8 to the track, which is good. And uh, guys, it's hot. It's really hot. So do our best to keep cranking stuff away. Maybe need to get some AC put in the shop. But with that, guys, drop any questions below on the engine build stuff. I'm pretty happy with how the the oil control rings holding the apex seals in worked. Um, I think that went pretty well. I don't know that I'm going to do it like that every time, but I also think with uh, just with this engine and the last couple engines, putting these together by myself, I think there's some good tricks. I've gotten really good at doing the center iron. I, I was stoked with getting that on the first try. What I was getting at is I think I want to try to ha always have somebody here to help me. It's going to make this stuff go a lot easier. Um, you know, cutting those rubber bands, I thought they would just fly out, but I had to, like, sort that while I'm holding this and doing I just need an extra set of hands. Um, and then also just to make sure everything gets done right and I don't miss anything. You know, not that we missed anything on this engine. Definitely got it done. Coolant test, check, in play, check. Everything's good. Um, but at the same time, want to make sure, you know dots or t's and cross our eyes that uh we're getting these done so with that guys comment with any questions um let me know if you know when this thing gets put together i'll try to get some clips of the car all buttoned up and uh and it running in this bridge port i'm going to be doing this bridge port again on the engine that's in that box over there which is a brand new engine from mazda we're going to pull that all apart and fix it and rebuild that for the right hand drive fd and uh we'll get everything going so with that guys thank you guys very much for watching We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it rad. Letty. Is it hot outside? It's hot.
too hot. <laughs> I might go ride my bike because it's hot. Good sweat. Always makes it worth it. Peace, guys.